Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna show you how to install SteamOS 3 on your laptop or your desktop. This is basically the same operating system that's running on the Steam Deck. And as you can see here, I've got it running on an AMD laptop. This just happens to have the Ryzen 5625U with integrated graphics. I don't have a dedicated GPU in this. And everything that works on the Steam Deck works over here. We've got system-wide FSR, game scope is installed. We're gonna get into a little bit of gameplay here. And overall, this has been working out really well. It's known as Hollow ISO. It's not officially from Valve, but it's basically the Steam Deck's operating system deconstructed and set up in a way that we can install it on different hardware. And in the past month or so, there's been a lot of updates to this operating system. It now works with certain integrated Intel GPUs and NVIDIA video cards. So here we are with The Witcher 3 running on this system here. I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth and we can access all of the stuff we can on the Steam Deck by just pressing the Xbox button and A at the same time. We're gonna hold those. It's gonna bring up our menu over on the right hand side. Brightness, sound, everything's working on this laptop here. We've even got the performance overlay. The TDP is working, but with a laptop like this, I don't want to set it at 15 watts. Uh, you can manually adjust the GPU clock. You can set up FSR. Now I'm going to turn this on real quick, but I need to go into the settings of the game and lower the resolution. If you take a look at the performance overlay on the left-hand side, you can see that it's on. But if I take the resolution down a bit, We've got FSR working on this. And I've also tested this on an Intel system. It had a Tiger Lake 1165G7. But in my experience, I've just had much better luck with AMD, be it a mobile APU with integrated graphics or a Radeon GPU like a 6400 or a 6500. But they do have support for NVIDIA GPUs now from the 900 series and up or Intel iGPUs from the UHD 630 and up. I've tested this on a couple different laptops and desktops, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get it up and running. It's actually fairly easy, but there are a couple things we're going to need before we get started. First up, you'll need a USB drive, 8GB or larger. I've got a 32GB drive here. We're also going to need another PC to flash the installer to the USB drive from. You can do this from a Linux machine, a Mac OS machine, or Windows. In this video we're going to be doing it from Windows 10. And I'm going to walk you through the whole installation. Now, during the installation on the PC we're going to be installing this to, you will need to be connected online. I'll show you how to set up Wi-Fi through terminal. But if you have Ethernet, I would highly recommend using that. Either the built-in Ethernet on your PC or an adapter. But if you're ready to get Hollow ISO installed on your laptop or PC, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Alright, so now that you've decided what PC or laptop you want to install this on and you have your USB drive, let's go ahead and get started. So this will actually work from any other operating system. You can do this on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. I'm using a Windows machine here, obviously. I've plugged my USB drive in. Just that simple 32 gigabyte drive, but all you really need is an 8. This is all I had laying around. First thing we need to do is download an application that's going to allow us to flash this operating system or the image itself to the USB drive and for this we're going to be using Etcher. This is the application that will work with any other operating system, Linux, Mac, Windows. We're going to go with Windows and just the portable version. Okay, so now that we have that application downloaded, it's time to download the operating system and we're going to be using Hollow ISO. So this is definitely still a bit early, but it is working out pretty well. I would highly recommend reading through everything on the GitHub page. And I've had really good luck with this on AMD hardware, from a 2000 series APU on up to a 6000 series APU. But they have recently added support for Intel and NVIDIA GPUs. So if we scroll down here, you can see that NVIDIA GPUs are supported. But there is a section right here. AMD RX Vega Plus APU iGPU 4000, 5000 series, 6000 series GPUs. Intel UHD 630 Plus integrated graphics and NVIDIA GTX cards that are 900 and up. So using older Intel iGPUs under the 630 and the GTX 900 series just really isn't going to work out very well. But like I mentioned, mainly I've been testing this on APUs and it works out very, very well. Go ahead and read through all of this. There's some great information here. There's even kind of a how-to install, but I'm going to walk you through it because it's actually pretty simple when you have Ethernet. Now we can do this over Wi-Fi if you want to, and I'll show you the steps, but personally I highly recommend using Ethernet, whether you have an adapter or an Ethernet port on your laptop. So first thing we're going to do is download the ISO. 
right here. All links will be in the description. Once this is finished up, it's known as the hollow ISO.zip. I'm going to place this on my desktop along with Etcher. Okay, so everything's finished downloading. We've got Etcher. Let's go ahead and start this up. I just downloaded the portable version, so I don't need to do any kind of installation. And we also have hollow ISO right here on the desktop. So flash from file is what we want to choose here in Etcher. We're going to navigate to where we have that hollow ISO.zip. So mine is on my desktop. We don't need to extract it. Etcher's going to handle all of that for us. Next up, we need to select the target, and the target is going to be the USB drive we want to flash to. So this is my SanDisk USB drive. Actually says it here. Some USB drives won't say it. Make sure you cross-reference the drive letter. So if I take a look here, this is drive F, and we're good to go. So that's exactly what I want to flash to. And choose Select and Flash. Now Etcher is going to go ahead and flash that ISO to the USB drive. Give it a little time to finish up. It really depends on how fast your USB port is and the USB drive you're flashing to. Once it's finished, you might get some warnings like this. Go ahead and close out of everything. This is just because Windows can't read those new drive partitions on the USB drive. And now we're ready to move over to the device we want to flash this operating system to. I'm going to walk you through the process. It's actually really easy, but during installation, you need to be online, whether you're using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And there's a couple ways to go about this. So let's move over there now. All right, so I've got my USB drive plugged into the laptop. I'm going to enter the BIOS so we can boot from this USB drive on this Lenovo laptop. While it's starting up, I press F2 a few times, it'll bring us right into the BIOS. Different PC manufacturers use different hotkeys. Sometimes it's F10, sometimes it's F7, or delete. Just do a little bit of research on your manufacturer. You can get into the BIOS pretty easily. But the first thing we need to do is disable secure boot. So you need to find security in your BIOS and disable this. That way we can boot from that USB drive. And with this here, I'm just going to go into my boot priority section and set my USB as my main boot drive. So every time I start this up with this USB plugged in, it'll boot from that. Now you can always enter the boot menu depending on the manufacturer. Again, all of these have different hotkeys to get to that menu. But we definitely need to boot from that USB drive in order to install the operating system. So we're going to go ahead and boot from that USB drive. I'm going to move in a bit closer. And we've got a few options, but this is the one that I always choose. SteamOS install medium with extra compatibility. If you use your arrow keys, you can move up, but we're going to go ahead and choose this option. Press enter, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at this screen, and I'll walk you through the installation process. In order for this installer to work, we need to be online, and a lot of you are probably going to want to use Wi-Fi. So we're going to enable Wi-Fi, but if you're on Ethernet, all you need to do to start the installation is hollow install. Just type that out, and it'll start the install. If you want to connect to Wi-Fi, we're going to type in IWCTL, press enter. Next command is going to be device list. That's going to list our Wi-Fi devices that are in our PC or laptop, whatever you're using. We need to take note of the name. So if you take a look at this list here, the first option is name minus WLAN0, so WLAN0, and that's the adapter that I'm going to be using. Yours might be named differently, but everyone that I've tested so far has been that name. Now we need to tell that device to scan for networks. We're going to type in station, your device name, mine happens to be WLAN0, get networks. And now we've got a list of the available networks. In order to connect, we're going to type in station, your device name, connect, and then the Wi-Fi name or the Wi-Fi SSD that you want to connect to. I'm going to go with mesh, so mine's going to look like station, WLAN 0, connect, mesh, and then I'll press enter. It's going to prompt you for the password, put in the correct password, and you're connected over Wi-Fi. Now we can actually start the install by typing out hollow install. But if you're using Ethernet, initially all you have to do is plug in Ethernet, type in holo install, and you'll start the installation. There's a few more steps we need to take while doing the install. So holo install, it's going to prompt us. 
Do we want to do a bare bones install or the full Steam OS experience? I want to go with the full experience, so I'm going to press 2, enter. Now we need to choose a drive to install the operating system to. I've only got one NVMe drive in here, and it's a 512 gigabyte, so it's really easy for me to pick it out. NVMe 0 and 1. And if you take a look at the list over here, you can see that it's the largest drive, so I know that this is my NVMe. That's what I'm going to be installing to. You could also install to an external drive if you have it plugged in, but keep in mind, this is going to wipe that complete drive. We're not going to be doing any kind of dual booting of Windows and SteamOS 3.0. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. NVMe 0 and 1. Press Enter. It's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to wipe this drive. I'll type Y and press Enter. That's going to format the whole drive for this operating system. And there's a couple more prompts that are going to pop up during the installation. With the first one here, we do have a few options, but for this, default is going to be all. All you need to do is press enter. So for the next prompt, default is going to be typing out one and press enter. That's what I always do. And are you sure you want to proceed with the installation? Type Y and press enter. But there's one last prompt that'll show up before we can complete the installation. So I'm using an AMD GPU, or an iGPU in this case. I'm going to choose number one. But if you're using an Intel iGPU, choose number two. If you're using NVIDIA, choose number three. The installation is now finished. We can reboot the system by typing reboot. We're going to go ahead and remove that USB drive, and it's going to boot right into SteamOS. And all that's left to do is remove that USB stick, power on your computer, and wait for it to boot up. So you're going to see a little section like this. This is kind of our recovery section if we ever run into issues. But it's going to pass it within five seconds, or you can just press enter. So we'll just give it a second. And there you have it. We've got the initial setup. So we'll just choose our language, our location. We'll also have to set up Wi-Fi if you're not using Ethernet. And obviously, you're going to have to sign into your Steam account with this. And once you get Wi-Fi and your Steam account set up, it might need to reboot one time just for a quick update. And once that's finished, you're ready to go. So I would highly recommend using a controller with this. You can use a wired controller or you can go wireless. If you want to connect a Bluetooth controller, press Escape on the keyboard. Head over to Settings. From here, we're going to find Bluetooth. And this does support most Bluetooth controllers. I've got an Xbox controller paired up. And we can access our performance settings and overlay by holding the Xbox button and pressing A. That's going to bring up our menu over on the right hand side, in game or while you're in the Steam Deck UI. You've got brightness control, volume control. We can turn that performance overlay on. We can turn FSR on. We can set up different profiles here, but it definitely comes in handy. So Xbox button and A at any time, and it'll bring up that menu. I'm going to go ahead and install a game real quick. We'll just go with Shredder's Revenge, something easy and quick to download. And we can play it directly from here. I'm going to turn that overlay down a bit so we can actually see the screen. Just tap play. It's going to get everything ready for us and launch the game. So it works just like the Steam Deck, but we're on a laptop or a desktop. So yeah, I hope this tutorial helps you get Hollow ISO installed on your laptop or PC. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you installed it on, if it worked, if it didn't work. That way we can kind of get a list going here and some people can just search through the comments to see if their specific hardware might work on this or not. It's only going to get better in the future, and it's going to be a little ways off before Valve releases official SteamOS 3, so this is a great start, and it's pretty awesome to mess around with. We also have that desktop interface. Go to your power options, and you'll go right to the desktop just like the Steam Deck itself. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. All links for everything I mentioned are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.